grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It was a Sabbath. Jesus goes by a man born blind. The disciples point it out to him and ask him this question. Who is it who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? The answer, neither. The man was not born blind as some sort of punishment from God against a particular sin. And most of the time, we stop at that part of the answer. But Jesus goes on and says that this man was born blind, that the works of God might be displayed in him. When you think about that, or at least when I think about that, I find it unsettling and disturbing at first glance. To think that God would allow someone to endure blindness for the greater part of his life until Jesus happens to show up, his disciples point him out so that God might be doing the works in his life. It almost seems unfair or cruel or unkind to make someone endure blindness for all of those years, all for this single purpose. But then again, we need to reflect more on what Jesus has said. Because Jesus has also said, if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off because it is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than with two hands or two feet to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the hell of fire. Let's take Jesus at his word. The punishment for sin is far worse than being blind or lame. And that is the most important work of God, that people would be delivered from their sinful condition, that God would save them from his wrath against their sin. He would save them from hell. And so Jesus, Jesus comes to this man not just to undo the sin that has resulted in him being blind, but Jesus comes to undo the sin by giving this man faith to deliver him from sin and death and the devil, to deliver him from hell. We're often trite. When we hear St. Paul say, all things work for go- together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. But what God is really saying here through Paul is that he will use the evil, wicked, offensive things of this world to his purposes, to his end of saving people. He will use the abuse or the prostitution, or the bankruptcy, or the martyrdom of Christians to accomplish his goal of saving people. It's unsettling from our point of view, but God is at work, working all things for the good according to his purpose. And that ultimate good is saving people From hell. And so Jesus, Jesus sees this man and he acts on his behalf. He spat on the ground and makes mud with his saliva. He anointed the man's eyes with the mud and told him to go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means the sent one. And you see, it is not the mud or the spit or even the water at Siloam that heals this man. It is Jesus. 
Jesus, who is the one sent from God to bring deliverance to sinners. Jesus goes on and says, We must work the works of God while I am in the world. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And so Jesus does the work of healing. That is the work of his Father. And you see, that's what sets the Pharisees off. They say that Jesus is working on the Sabbath. They accuse him of breaking the third commandment. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. They're equating what Jesus is doing to a doctor healing a patient on the Sabbath. But that isn't what Jesus is doing. You see, Jesus has come to indeed give Sabbath rest, to take people from their sin and bring them into that eternal relationship, that eternal rest. And that is what Jesus is doing for this man. You see, in that eternal rest, there will be no sin or any of its effects. And so Jesus is taking the effect of sin that has affected this man that he was born blind. And Jesus is saying, I myself will endure the wrath of that sin by the cross. I am going to undo your sin. And this is a foretaste of it even before that happens. And for you and for me, even before we were born, Christ has taken that sin, all of the sin of all of the world, all of your sin, into himself. And he did it all at Calvary's cross. So that is what the Sabbath is ultimately about. That is why Jesus is remembering the Sabbath day, observing the Sabbath day, by doing this miracle. He's keeping the Sabbath, pointing him forward to that eternal Sabbath, that eternal rest in his kingdom that will have no end. Jesus doesn't just heal this man. Jesus heals this man and saves him. And this man isn't an idiot. He puts two and two together. He knows that a sinner wouldn't be listened to by God and able to heal him like this. So when he is interrogated by the Pharisees, he knows that Jesus is indeed the Messiah. He says, if this man were not from God, he could do nothing. The, the Pharisees, they refuse to see the picture that this man is painting. They kick him out of the religious community. And then Jesus finds this man and asks, Do you believe in the Son of Man? The man indeed did. He had been given faith, even without seeing Jesus. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. He heard that word and he was healed because of the faith that was given him in Jesus Christ, through the hearing of that word. And so he says, yes, I believe. Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? And Jesus says, I who am standing before you, I who am speaking to you, am he. And the man says, yes, I believe, and falls down and worships at Jesus' feet. Not only did Jesus open this man's physical eyes, but he let this man see Jesus for who he is, the God who is to be worshipped. And that's what the Pharisees refused to see. They were like people who have a light shine on them, and their initial reaction is to cover their eyes and to avert their head so as not to be confronted by the bright light. The Pharisees don't want to see Jesus. They refuse to have his light shine on them. But Jesus, Jesus wants to shine that light on you, to open your eyes, not just so that you would have a physical healing, but so that you would see him in faith, so that you would know he has taken your sins upon himself. And that's what we hear in the hymn, Amazing Grace. We know the words, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. 
was blind, but now I see. This vision, this seeing, is that Jesus opens our eyes to see him. That's what he's referring to, is this miracle. And the amazing grace is that Christ forgives all of your sins. For John Newton, he knew that he was a sinner. He talks about the light of Christ opening his eyes. He was a naval officer, but deserted. He became a slave trader, devaluing human life, treating it as though it were a mere commodity, a way to make money. He was rebellious and insolent and arrogant and insubordinate. He writes, I sinned with a high hand, and I made it my study to tempt and seduce others. But one night when he was in the midst of stormy waters, he remembered a passage from Proverbs he had been taught. Because I have called and ye have refused, I will laugh at your calamity. And he realizes that in the midst of the storm, if he calls out to God, because of his rebellion, because of his refusal to see Jesus, because of his rejection of God's call, if he died, he would be getting exactly what he deserved. You see, that's where amazing grace comes into play, because Christ did not leave him there, but showed mercy to him. And he does the same for you and for me. Christ comes to forgive slave traders and the insolent and the unregenerate. He comes to bring life. And that is what the blind man got. That is what John Newton got. And that is what is for you. And that's where the hymn Amazing Grace falls short, is because it doesn't actually point you to Jesus. It doesn't say that Jesus is the one who has come and borne your sin. Jesus himself will fill in the blanks, though. He will reveal who he is for you. He is your Savior. The Pharisees, they had their physical vision. They physically saw Jesus, but they didn't see him for who he is. He didn't, they didn't see him as God, God in human flesh, God working, God bringing salvation. They rejected him. Jesus says, for judgment I came into this world, that those who do not see may see, and that those who see may become blind. The Pharisees were blind. Much of this world is blind in its sin. And you, you at one time were in darkness, but now you are in the light of the Lord. Walk as children of the light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and true, and try and discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. Why? Because Christ shines his light on you, that you may see him, and believe that you who were born blind have received God's deliverance. And on the Sabbath, a Sabbath has been prepared for you, an eternal rest in his kingdom that has no end. In Jesus' name, amen.